have I ever mentioned that the spring and the summer are not my favorite seasons of the year for photography? It's not just the sunny weather, the harsh light, but also all the allergies that I get in late spring. But recently, two miracles happened. One of them is that I started taking these pills and they've been very, very good. I still have a little bit of allergies when I go out and take photos, but much less than before. And the other one is that it was foggy again. I had a foggy day. It was beautiful and I made quite a few images. I'm gonna talk about them, about how I made them, how I edited them. I have plenty of footage from the field as well, so let's do this. But first I'd like to thank Steve Bennett, a fellow photographer from the UK who has been an incredible supporter of my work and a great help for this YouTube channel and everything I do over on my Patreon. There are 50 of you there and I really, really appreciate it. Steve is also a great photographer and he has amazing work on his website and Instagram account. So please go check him out following the links in the description down below. Thank you, Steve, and thank you to all my patrons. Not only the fog is not as dense in the summer or late spring as it is in the winter, but it doesn't last as long. So that's why I decided to get in the car and try to go to higher altitudes to get more of that fog. By the way, I recorded this with the 360 camera and this is the other side of what the camera was seeing. I think that's, that's hilarious. Anyway, on my way to the uh, mountains, I found uh, or I saw a uh, potential photo, so I had to uh, stop. I'm going to be telling you also about the uh, lens that I use because some of you uh, have asked about that. In this case, I'm mounting the... Uh, the zoom lens, the 20, the Tamron 28 to 200 millimeters, because I didn't need um, a faster aperture and the flexibility of a zoom lens, well, you know, when you park on the side of the road, well, it's uh, pretty great. Also, as you can see in this photo shoot, I used the uh, monitor on top of the camera. I was recording the screen of the camera, so you'll be able to see what I was seeing when I was composing the, the images. By the way, you see those uh, sheep over there and the solar panels? You might recognize this spot because uh, I have uh, made a few images from here in the, in the past. I think I included at least one of them, if not more, in my book uh, One. I don't think there are any from this spot in my latest book, Memorias Nanewa. And by the way, both of them are available on my website. Uh, the link is going to be in the description down below. Of course, I took a photo of that sheep. Anyway, what I saw uh, here was uh, the mountains in the background. There were two ridges uh, there that looked beautiful. So I was looking for something to contrast that uh, against because the, the two, I thought that the two mountains would be a little bit boring just by themselves. And I thought that that fence with that house, well, there, there was more stuff there, but my idea was to use that fence and the house to create something interesting. I tried uh, placing the fence in many different positions in the uh, foreground. I tried from multiple angles, but the one I liked the most was one without the fence. Uh, the, the foreground was uh, just the field. It was an empty foreground, slightly out of focus on the, uh, on the very bottom and getting uh, gradually more and more in focus. I like to do that quite a bit in my uh, compositions. And the house on the top right, the ridges on the uh, top left. The editing was uh, pretty simple. Uh, I'm gonna show you what I did. I used a linear gradient uh, here on the uh, top of the frame. Let me show you the effect that it has. So it shows more, I used a little bit of dehazing and uh, decreased the exposure a little bit to show more of those ridges there that were kind of hidden by the uh, fog. Well, I used another two on the bottom to, to, to gradually uh, lead the viewer uh, to the main part of the frame, that is the, the, the house and the, the mountains in the, in the background. And you'll see another mask here, the last one, that uh, I used to darken the house just a little bit to make it stand out more from uh, the, the rest of the frame. Similarly, what I did is I used the uh, black and white mixer for the colors. I uh, increased the luminance of the yellow tones quite a bit and the green tones as well to make that grass a little bit brighter. I love that I'm able to do this with my black and white photos because the raw file uh, still has the uh, color information. I'll show you the original one, it's this one. So I'm able to do this. This is probably one of the reasons why I have a hard time uh, switching to a monochrome uh, camera because you lose this. I mean, you can always use filters in the field, but this way is much easier and much more convenient because you can adjust it 
to, to how much you need. The effect of filters is baked in the photo and you cannot change that. I kept trying, but uh, as you can see, the conditions changed and the two ridges in the background were no longer visible. That fog was coming down a little bit. This is what I love the most about foggy days, you know, how quickly things change, how different a scene can become within just a few minutes. And of course, how different the same spot, the same place can look from one day to another. So even though I've been to this spot and many others uh, multiple times, I always enjoy going back because you never know what you're going to find. Okay, let's go back to the car. We don't have a lot of time, so let's engage turbo mode. As I said earlier, I wanted to gain altitude to get into that fog. And there are a couple of hills around town that usually do that. As, as you can see, the fog was more dense up there. The only problem is that there is not much stuff up there. There, are some, there is a facility with some uh, antennas for the radio and TV, and I think there is, a, there is a helicopter base as well. But I was also hoping to photograph some nature, so that's why I thought it'd be worth the try. As you can see, I switched to the Sigma 20 millimeters because I wanted to capture this scene right here that you can see there the windy road with that group of trees. This is an image I've made before. It's made it to some of my books. I really like the composition itself, so I always try it again once I go there, because you just never know, as I said earlier, when you are going to run into better conditions that would make for a better image. I tried a couple of different angles, and this is the one that I like the most of the bunch. It was also a slightly different angle from the images I had made there uh, before. Uh, look at this one. This one was my favorite. It still is my favorite. It's from uh, June 2020. As I said, there is not much up there. I still liked the way this path was looking with the fog in the background, still with the 20 millimeters and shooting uh, 1.4. I tried a couple of different compositions, one with the trees on the right side and one without the trees, but neither really worked for me. Then I found some paddles. I love the paddles because you can get very creative results and they are fun. They are fun to play with. I'm actually thinking about buying a little mirror, unbreakable one, ideally, that I could bring with me everywhere, maybe have in the car or my backpack, so I can place it on the ground and play with reflections in places where I could never or I would rarely uh, get reflections. It's just, just an idea. Just like I did here with the paddles. That, uh, they let me play with the reflection of the trees. I was there for quite a bit, trying to find the right paddle, the right angle, the right height, because you know when you have something so close to you, like the, the paddles, the reflections on the water, even the tiniest adjustment on the camera can make a huge difference. See how uh, different these images are, and that's why you have to work the scene until you find something that works for you. By the way, just a little tip, if you have problems with autofocus, uh, focusing on the reflections of a paddle, you can always focus on the object itself that is being reflected and then uh, pointing down to the paddles. That, that should do the trick. All right, so this power line was the first glimpse I got of the facility on top of the hill of uh, civilization, and I welcomed uh, the, the power line because it gave me something interesting to photograph. I tried from both sides and for whatever reason I prefer the image where the, ca uh, the cable goes from you know left to right. I think it has something to do with the way the antennas are in the background. Not sure. But before getting to the uh, facility to, the, to those structures, I wanted to make some images of the forest, so I took out my long lens, the Rockingham 85mm 1.4. Woodlands are usually pretty chaotic. I mean, every once in a while you'll find the perfect scene, like a photographer put it there for you to photograph. But I find that in general, uh, yeah, they're pretty chaotic. So longer lenses can help you a lot by isolating just a few trees or one tree if you use a very uh, shallow depth of field from the chaos of the rest of the uh, forest. And that's what I was trying to do here. I played with some uh, weeds, uh, placing some weeds between the tree the trees and myself, because shooting at 1.4, they'd be totally out of focus and they would create this almost dreamy, dreamy look. Plus, they can hide some of the complexity of the uh, very near uh, foreground. And finally, I found this rock here that I thought looked pretty interesting. I shot it at 20 millimeters wide open at 1.4 to make the rock very sharp, while the background is slightly out of, slightly out of focus. 
I took this even farther in post, as you'll be able to see here. There you go. Uh, as you can see, the, the rock, the idea here was to use masks to make the rock even more clear, more contrasty in comparison with the rest of the uh, frame. And I think I achieved that. Uh, what I did is uh, a couple linear gradients on this side to make it uh, darker. It was too bright there, you see. And then the, the rock, a mask just on the rock to, uh, as I said, increase the contrast. I, I increased the clarity quite a bit. And I inverted mask. I inverted that mask once I, I selected the, uh, the rock to add a little bit of haze on the rest of the image. As you can see here, uh, decrease the clarity. I added a little bit of haze so the result Yes, of that mask, as you can see there. It creates almost like a fake fog effect. Don't overdo it because it looks horrible, but just a little bit like I did here looks just fine. And I think it really helps bringing out uh, that uh, the, the subject, and in this case is the, uh, the rock. All right, you know I'm a sucker for signs, especially the blank ones with no letters, no symbols, no nothing, because you can use your imagination to to guess what it used to say, if, if anything, of course. I started here with the long lens, with the 85, 1.4, and then switched to the wide angle, the 20 millimeters. The images look very, very different with those uh, two uh, lenses. They are very different uh, focal lengths. As you can see, a longer focal length makes the background more important, almost on par with the subject, because it looks bigger. Look at the, the tree there in the background. It's just a hint that is there because of the shallow depth of field and the fog, but it's still very much there. While the wide angle makes the subject the main point of the frame. It shows more of the background, which can give a lot of context, but it's pretty clear which one is the main character and what is the supporting cast. I finally got to the facility on top of the mountain and the first and pretty much only composition that I, I went and made there was one that I had made before as well. And you can see in this image back from 2020, I wanted to give it another try, even though the 20 millimeters proved not wide enough. The original was made at 18 millimeters. So, but even worse, the scene had changed quite a bit since I first made that image. They moved the power line. I was surprised to see this, the, the, the difference in the two photos. In the original, it's behind the structure. And I think this is a pretty good example of why we can't wait to photograph something that we want uh, to photograph, because we never know when things are going to change for the worse. And similarly, this is a very good example of why we have to keep trying, because we never know when things are going to change for the better. All of a sudden, a composition that didn't used to work, now it does. Okay, so this is the uh, helicopter pad and the control tower. I was going to photograph that tower, but I saw that little shed building, whatever it was, it caught my eye. So for this one, I switched to the Tamron 28 to 200. Again, I didn't need a shallow depth of field or anything like that. And in fact, I wanted to show uh, more uh, some of that fence to give the impression, you know, that the building is behind that fence, behind that is a, a place that you don't have access to, a place where you are not supposed to be, if you will. And then, yes, I did photograph the uh, control tower over there. And with that, I was done in that mountain. So I got back in the car and drove to a random location. I just started driving around. I saw first a, a, a bus stop. I need to talk about bus stops at some point because that is another ongoing project that I have. There are a lot of bus stops here in, in Galicia, I guess in the whole of Spain, but this is where, where I live, it's where I see them. And in, on every trip that I go around here, I always take photos of these, of them. Uh, and uh, some of them are pretty cool and they are in beautiful spots like this one that you can see here that was in the mountains, in the Caudal Mountains. Uh, that was the moment that kind of kick-started this project that is still ongoing, as I said, and I, I don't know if it's gonna have a finish line or anything. But uh, yeah, since then I tried to photograph uh, the, all the bus stops that I that I find that are interesting, of course. But I was so glad that I stopped here because on my way back to the car, I saw a very cool tree. I needed to switch lenses. The other ones were with the 35, 1.4, by the way. So I switched to the 28 to 200 again, and I photographed this beautiful tree that looked amazing in the fog. And I think this one was the best image of the day. 
more driving randomly, uh, trying to find anything that would work in that fog that was clearing up a little bit, by the way. And I stopped here because I saw a field with the cows and I thought that it could be interesting. And it was uh, actually very interesting. They were very interested in me. They stared at me for quite a while and then they, they started, you know, walking towards me. I, I guess they thought I had something for them. I don't know, but it was, it was fun to photograph them. There was even a couple of cows that were licking each other and that was, I don't know, kind of cute. And that's all the footage I have. I made um, a few more images after that, but they are not even worth uh, showing because they don't work at all. All in all, a very fun morning. I was so happy to see some fog again because it really, really makes for great photography. This was a few days ago and I actually just came back from another outing, another photo shoot out in the fog. And actually today was even denser, was even heavier than what you just uh, saw. So I'm very, very happy to have uh, that, those conditions again, even if it's just for a limited time. I'm very glad that my, I don't have to suffer my allergies, but that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.